podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hello and welcome everybody. This is Joe from StartupRate.io, your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany. As you may be able to hear in the background the noise, I'm still here at Aufschwungmesse in lovely Frankfurt in the former building of the Stock Exchange. I do have Dominic here with me, who is from the startup Evo Motors, um, who is going to tell us just a tiny bit about their product and what they are doing. Welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. I've been I've been skimming through your website and I've seen something that looks pretty much like a small SUV and something about solar. Is is this approximately true? This is approximately true, but it's uh, pretty much more about it. Uh, to be honest, yeah. Um, maybe I should surround the area that we're talking about. Sure, uh, sure, uh, sure. Evo Motors, as, as we are standing right here. Uh, the company was founded in, in August 2017, and it's a spin-off from the Technical University of uh, Munich. And um, it was designed together with 200 students, people that went to their master thesis, did their diploma, and did their, uh, their degrees at the Technical University. So after successfully coming up with a product that was designed for the African market to fulfill the needs of the people living in the rural, rural areas, uh, of Tanzania, of Ghana, of Kenya, and it was designed not only for their needs, but also together with the universities in these countries of the African continent. Um, so what these students came up with was a, a multi-usable vehicle that was able to carry a ton of weight, to carry uh, among 10 people at the same time, that comes along with uh, all-wheel drive, a vehicle that is supported by solar power, so it's independent from uh, from the current net, for example, so independent from, from other power sources. And uh, yeah, so the people can fulfill different use cases for their own. Okay, um, my experience with uh, Tanzania is quite limited, okay. but I have to admit I've been there. They have some very nice streets, but as soon as you get off like the main streets, the main tracks, uh, basically everything becomes very fast, quite very sure. shaky. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's like... So true. Yeah. And, and uh, sometimes we even had problems to talk with each other because the car was so noisy because the street was so uneven. And th that's the area you're going for. Exactly. That's the area we're looking for. That's the street conditions that we're looking for and that the car was designed for. So the vehicle itself really can run up to 200 kilometers. Uh, in, depending on the on the road conditions that you have over there, but we know that for maybe ten kilometers you can take two or three hours if the road conditions are as such. Yeah, we know that there are rocks on the street, that there are animals that uh, you have to avoid during a ride, that there are uh, uh, steep falls, uh, and you have to go uphill like in incredibly and uh, yeah, yeah, totally crazy, like going up and going, going up, down. Going down. down. Yep. Exactly. And that is something your little, I call it an electrical SUV, is that true? Yeah. Can do that? It can absolutely do that. Of course, electric power is all, always depending on the, on the resources. This is why we want to work together with photovoltaic techniques, photovoltaic systems that can be installed uh, autotically, so in different decentral areas, rurally, to support the people there, so they are not depending on the net that is provided in urban regions. No. Uh, one question. So that means because when I've I've seen the pictures, there's basically a driver's cabin mm -hmm. and there's a big trunk in the back, mm -hmm. and uh, on top of this driver's cabin there is there's some solar panels. Yes. Is is that the only means to charge it? Uh, it's absolutely not. To, to be honest, it, this shows uh, what we're heading for. This shows um, that we are that we are working together. Uh, with photovoltaic uh, providers, photovoltaic system providers, um, and that we are looking for solar power. But this will give us an extra range extent of about 10 kilometers, just the little panel that we have on the roof. But what we have, we do support different modular pieces that you can install on the back, on the trunk of the car. And uh, for example, there's one module that is a covered module, and this is all supported 
um, with solar panels, which will extend your range quite faster and quite bigger. And what other modules are we talking about? You, you told me that there are like two pallets. Yeah. Your pallets, uh, yes. typical size, you can fit in the yes. back. Anything else? Yes. It was designed for, for example, transporting up to 10 people at the same time. This is one module. Then another module that provides uh, the perfect shape for Euro pallets, so for a standardized system that everybody is used to. Um, then on the other hand, it's made for good transport. It comes with smaller walls. If you have like big types of good, if you have smaller types of good, we have the high wall solution and we have the, the close up solution that can make for a use case, for example, to transport cooled medicine from A to B, or on the other hand, uh, it can be used as a, as a medical station, for example, to transport a person that is in need and to give him medical treatment. Like an emerg uh, emergency vehicle. Like that, for example. Ah, okay, I see. Do you also uh, sell it with sirens? <laughs> Flashlight <laughs> sirens? This, this would be an extra, yeah. Okay, of okay. Of course, it's ad uh, edible, yeah. So th the whole car was, uh, was designed to be most flexible so that you can add any extra that you want. Yeah, if you if you're into into snow cleaning, you can have your your snow cleaner on the on the, on the front, for example. Uh, you can have another car on the back, so you can add any any extras that you want to add. Huh, I see. And uh, thing is, w when I'm now looking at this and say, "Oh, that's awesome! Where can I buy it?" <laughs> Good question. <laughs> the only the only chance to buy it right now is to pre-order. We are going to go into production in early 2020, in the first quarter of 2020. Um, we will start producing within Germany, in, in our factory in Bayerbach, which is close to Landshut, here in Bavaria. Which is, which is close to? Landshut. Landshut? Well, which, and oh, it, and which, is, which is one hour uh, drive north from Munich. Ah, so, Munich, here we go. <laughs> there you go. So Bavarian. <laughs> Yeah, and fr from there we will we will spread our reach um, to the emerging countries, uh, to the countries in need that the car was designed for. We will we will uh, head for for Africa firstly, for some selected countries in, in Africa, uh, to have an African reach, and after we're heading for Latin America. Just one a little bit critical question because sure. if I have in the back of my mind, okay, it's very, it's very efficient. It ha it's made for very bad conditions. It's quality made in Germany. Isn't it a little bit expensive for emerging markets? So, good question though. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Uh, that gives me the chance to explain a little bit about the car and the vehicle itself. Um, the country that we're coming up right now with is uh, a country that's designed for the needs, firstly, in the first move uh, of the European, for the European market and the needs of the farmers and the hunters and all the target groups that we have in Germany. And of course, it will be equipped like fully, and there will be the chance to have a, a most equipped uh, vehicle that that will cost around about 25,000 euro. And this is of course a European market price. The the car that we will design on basis of this model, designed for the African market, like where it comes from, will be a much more easy car, a much more uh, simple car so for example we're not going to have a servo steering we're not going to have a heating and if not needed we won't even provide do provide doors in order to to reduce the costs for africa i see and uh, especially if you skip like air conditioning and the doors that also reduces weight and energy consumption exactly. which also extends the range again right yeah that's true Okay. So talking talking about talking about range, uh, we will come up with the the easy solution on first hand for our first production of 1,000 vehicles that we're gonna have in 2020, and uh, we will provide uh, 100 kilometers with a with an easy battery pack, um, and the room that we have, the room to install another battery pack allows us to go up to 200 kilometers. During our research work, we found out that in uh, in Germany in Europe, people are heading for 50 to 60 kilometers, uh, like daily use with their car. So this is what we wanted to cover to make sure that people um, can do that. And for Africa, it's even less. It's around about 35 kilometers. Mm -hmm. I see, I see. And um, when will be the car available in Africa? 
Uh, we want to make the car available in Africa in 2021. So around about 12 months later than the start in, uh, in Germany. Uh, we will also provide some imported cars for selected use cases because we also want to, to gather some data from the market, like where the, the car is used, which conditions we have. We need to new, uh, have new collectives of, uh, of weights, for example, of ranges. And uh, together with this data, we can design a more proper, a more uh, custom-like and country-fit version of the car. Depending on when you want to buy it in 2021, where you can actually buy it. Is there like car dealerships, you're going to have your own network, like the big, big brand names, or how do people get their hands on your car? Yeah, good question again. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, will, we, will, we will come up with uh, different channels. It will be available uh, for an online purchase, but of course, uh, we are heading mostly for B2B. We know that the people that are driving the cars later might not be the people that are buying the cars. So uh, B2B for us means that, of course, someone has to get in touch with the car, wants to, wants to feel it, wants to drive it on the road. That's why we're going to have dealerships on the market as well. And uh, to have a, a fast ramp up, we are heading for, for strong partnerships in the different countries. And uh, since you are a real hardware startup, every hardware startup I've talked to told me hardware is hard. So how are you actually going to avoid the fate of guys like Tesla who had huge ambitious goals of turning out like thousands of vehicles and only turned out like 30, 50, 100 vehicles over time? I'm really happy to say that um, our founders, they thought about that from the, from the very beginning um, of the idea of bringing, bringing up a vehicle like that. And uh, so the whole vehicle was designed um, to, be, to be produced really easily. The design is really simple, it's really love. We, we only have two dimensional surfaces, which uh, makes the production quite easy, quite easy to learn with and also from the machinery um, and tooling side, we, we won't have, uh, have big costs of, of tooling or machinery. This, it's going to be easy bending machines, easy welding machines to easy handle, easily be handled. Um, yes. That brings me to another question. Does this also make the repairs in the respective areas easier? Exactly. Exactly. From the beginning, Damage. As I, said, I, I think I start to understand your understand concept. The concept. Yeah. So the concept is that, that really uh, it supports the rural areas and the people living there by, by not only being, being initially cheap and, uh, and there's a certain ease uh, to, to get in contact with the, with the, with the vehicle and, and buy it finally, but also the total cost of ownership uh, maximally reduced to a minimum. And the, the ease of repairing and servicing the car is uh, also included. Why is it included? I said the surfaces are easy, so you can easily rebuild them. And most of the parts you can repair and rebuild quite easily. And there are not too many parts. We're talking about 500 to 600 parts that this, this car consists of. Just, just a few hundred uh, pieces, which we both assume is much less than a high-end car, right? Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> Great. It was such a pleasure having you here. Um, before you leave, just the questions. What are you looking for? Like corporate, uh, corporating partners, innovation partners, distribution networks, investors, or just awesome people? All of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, the okay. reason that I'm here with the Jörn today, uh, that, is, uh, that I came to the, the Aufschwung Messe uh, today to find some investors because we're running into uh, the A-Series funding and also to have some people um, to support us with the process within the funding round and uh, we're really looking forward to making good and great partnerships, trusted partnerships to people help us roll out the car and all our processes in Africa. Great, good last word. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure having you here. It was a pleasure, yeah. See you soon. Thank you. That's all folks. Find more news, streams, events and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, sharing is caring.